you couldn't stop laughing at the things he would say and do. Robin was the one guy you could, you know, every band has the one guy who you go, okay, I got five opinions. Now let's go to the guy who knows what's going on. That would be Robin. Robin would come in and go, no, man, this is what it should be. All right, let me go talk to Steven and then I'll talk to Juan and I'll get all this shit settled. So Robin was, that's why he was king because Robin was the king of the band. Robin didn't have an ego. Robin wanted the best for the band. And he's like, you know, I, yeah, I don't care. I mean, I remember the day and I, I was, it was sad when Robin, you know, said, and you know what, I think I'm done playing on the records, you know, because he, he looked at me and said, ah, just let the little guy do it. And that's on Dancing Undercover? Yeah, that was on the third record. And, and by that time, I mean, Warren's an incredible guitar player. Oh, he's and, a guitar hero. And better with every record, he'd be like, oh my God, well, look what he's doing now. If you thought he was good before, look, and Robin realized that and said, let's make the best record we can make. I'm more than happy to write the songs and keep all these guys in line. That's my role. He, he took on his role in the band. I might have already told you this in our first interview, but I had asked Bo if he thought there was a correlation between Robin participating less in the songwriting and Rat's albums getting weaker. 100%. Robin was a key in the songwriting process. He was. And as, you know, as he started to fade away... He became kind of unreliable, and it just wasn't happening anymore. And is this probably the most sober, I mean, other than, you know, going out drinking and partying and doing things, but is this uh, the most clear-headed you see Robin in all the days that you worked with him is probably on the first album? No, the first and the second albums, Robin was still very together, and he was still really a focused guy. By the time we got to the third record, Robin started to have some you know, he started falling apart, in my opinion. The pressure of being a rock star started to get to him. So it was by the third record. The first two, he was fine. Third record, you could definitely see something was amiss with Rob. And it, it sucked, because I loved Rob. I always think of an interview that... Uh, his father did. It was after Robin had passed. And his dad talked about how Robin's money, like his future earnings from Rat, he had left those residuals to his nieces and nephews and it like helped them through their lives and put them through college. And Yep, he did. I mean, Robin was a fantastic, Robin was a great guy. He, he just was. You, there was no one you met who said, oh, that Robin Crosby. Nobody was like, oh, dude, that's Robin. Let's go hang out. I mean, I mean, Robin and I, when we were making the second record, used to walk about a block down the street and go hit baseballs in the batting cage because Robin was drafted by the Dodgers. Was he really? Yes, he was. Yeah, Robin was a pitcher and was pursuing baseball and got drafted by the Dodgers. He actually went to Vero Beach. And during his second record, I mean, right down the street from Rumbo, there were batting cages. And we used to go in there and guys would look and like, oh, yeah, that's Robin Cray. He's a rock star. He's going to make... And that first ball would come and he'd absolutely crush it. And you could just hear people go, whoa, because he would crush that first ball. He was a big dude. He was a big 6'4". Big deep voice, man. Right. And Robin had an intimidating look, man. If Robin looked at you wrong, you were intimidated. Man, I have never heard that, uh, the baseball yeah. story. Never heard that before. Oh, he, he would do that. He used to come over, you know, at the time I was living with friends and he'd come over and hang out and drink beers. Robin was wonderful. I mean, all, all the guys in the rat were, in rat were really good guys. I mean, I still talk to the, all of them today. So, yeah, they're all really good guys. There's nobody I would say, oh, God, uh, that guy's on the phone? Never. I remember Robin Crosby and I during um, the Out of the Cellar record when we were at the Village, you know, because I, I worked there, so I had a key to everything. We would go into all the other studios and eat their leftover food every night. Me and Rob. And then we would go, um, Studio D had a had a, a, a keg in it. So, so, again, since I worked there, I could get it refilled and put it on the bill of whatever client was at Studio D. And we'd go in there and drink it every night. We would always go into Studio D. You know, we would just walk in there and they'd be like, hey. And I, everybody knew me. I'd been there for six years at that point. So I would just walk, like, yeah, yeah, we're just sitting back here, no problem. You know, I'm looking for someone. We'd just be drinking all the beer. And the keg would run out. I'd go into Kathy's office. It was the studio manager. Go, studio D needs another keg of beer. Put it on their client bill. And since everybody loved the guys in Rats, she's like, yeah, no problem.